What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days. This is the first guest. I wanted my first guest to be the hilarious Mark Norman, and I scored him even though I had to take a plane back from Miami to get here. <laughs> it's a long story, folks. I thought you moved to Miami. I don't know why. Here's the thing: we had a uh, we've had we had like a whole exchange, a whole text exchange. Yeah. For like that spanned like a couple weeks. Yep. And the whole time you thought I lived in Miami. Yes. Well, I was doing the Miami Improv, and I said, I saw you on Schultz. You got a little cheese in you. You know, you're a little swanky and dancey and <laughs> some kind of ethnicity. So I figured you moved down to Miami and it said, fuck these queefs up here. I'm going to Florida. And uh, I was wrong. So I said, oh, he'll, 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 he can open for me. You know, yeah. it'll be fun. You have some, you're ethnic, but you're more ethnic in like a French. Yes. Yeah. French little... kind of conquering, like a French kind of swing. But you're, the ones in Louisiana, were you guys like conquering French or were you more like French Revolution kind of egalite, liberté kind of French? I know you eat crawfish and it freaks me out. It's weird. I love it. You eat on it. newspapers like fucking Irish peasants. Yeah. Well, you do Asians out here stealing our whole peel thing with the, you know, you see them out there in the restaurant. They put the sauce right on the shell. Right. What are you doing? You crazy. Stop Asian hate. Stop crawfish hate. <laughs> Exactly. You guys are ruining it. But yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my dad's like from France people, you know, Normandy, you yeah. know, it's right in there. So uh, then my mom's a big Sicilian cunt and uh, <laughs> it's that mix. And then ah. you throw some Cajun in there and a couple of blacks and you got me. Because <laughs> you grew up in like a black neighborhood. Oh, yeah, of. it was yeah. rough. It was you rough. Grew up in, you grew up in New Orleans. Yeah, Treme. Which is like uh, like in New York, the New or this, pronouncing it New Orleans is like the way New Yorkers say Houston. Everybody else goes Houston Street. Yes. We go New Orleans. You yes. Guys, guys, it's one word. It's Norlands. Norlands. Yeah. yeah. It just kind of rolls. Comes with like a hint of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slavery was big down you there. You guys got some fucking Hall of Fame plantations down there. Oh, beautiful. I mean, we go to those weddings. If yeah. I ever did The Bachelor, I'd be kicked off because <laughs> of all the antebellum shit I was involved in. Yeah, don't do your wedding right now. That's the thing. Ryan Reynolds got in trouble, right? Because he, really? yeah, he had his wedding at a plantation. But... My thing is, like, the rules weren't set there. That was just, like, it was a beautiful kind of thing, you know? Yeah, it was just rich people who had slaves and land, and they had to till the field and servants and all that. So, obviously, it was bad, but uh, the places are beautiful. These They're big beautiful, pillars yeah. with the fence and the yard, it's great. But uh, you, you got, I do kind of agree, though. It is kind of like, if you look at it from their perspective, it's like, you're getting married. It's like, what's the difference between getting married there and getting married... Um, well, you could say Auschwitz at a slave at a slave house. <laughs> it's the but, same thing. But Auschwitz isn't pretty. No, that's true. You know. So you think if Auschwitz was pu pretty, like yeah, hell yeah. I yeah. mean, that's uh, cook some wood fire. That's a big oven. You get a good pizza going. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, that's true. And uh, if it was beautiful, you would have to give free. Maybe that would be like some free weddings. If you had a relative who, who was a gypsy, or yeah. Uh, there was one group that one big group that they targeted. I can't remember. Well, which they had ones. they had retards, they had gays, gypsies, black people were in the Holocaust. They yeah. get no love. Greeks too. They killed Greeks too. Oh, there you go. I don't know if they put us in there in the ovens, but they uh, they they conquered us for a couple four four years. Wow. Yeah. My mom was born there during the during the conquering. Yeah. The Holocaust during the Holocaust. What? Yeah. What? Well, during the World War Two. I mean, she was in Crete in Greece where yeah. the Nazis paratrooped in. We did a. Um, we did an episode of that on, on History Hyenas. By the way, we're doing the show on the old stripped down History Hyenas set. This just feels like Chris got me too <laughs> <This feels, laughs> It does. It really does. I'm just, replacing him. Yeah, it just feels like this looks, feels like Fighter and the Kid the week after the article drops. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the new Aunt Viv. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So being from New Orleans. Yeah. It's like a, New Orleans is like a, it's a unique town that has its own Slave. I always say, yes. like, America's not really a country. It's more like a united of many countries. Completely, yeah. We're I mean, not, you can see that with COVID. Like, Texas over here and then California over there, they're completely different. Yeah. One doesn't. One is tough about COVID. The other one's like, wear your mask. Yeah, exactly. Notice. Don't exactly. have your wedding at a, at a plantation. Right. Like that, yeah. In New York, Florida. Yeah. Totally different. Place. And Louisiana is just like fucking, what is it? 
what is that? What's going on down there? They forgot about us. Yeah. It's it's the Frenchy gay fuck uh, whorehouses mixed with the black slavery with the Creole mixed with like a lot of Italian influence and the Spanish influence. And they forgot about us. We could drink on the street. Jazz was invented. And we just let it all go. Carnival. We got Mardi Gras. And uh, it was just a free fucking free love baby and it was a port city so all these sailors would come in and rail the shit out of these skanks and whores and then leave and everybody just it just became this party hub and it's us louisiana like vegas all right we get it but this was louisiana nobody gave a shit right and it was the dumb south let them do what they want they're toothless they're fucking their sister and we're like yeah yeah we are whatever leave us alone and we could do what we wanted and it just became this hub of like great food and great music and great culture yeah, jazz was invented there, right? Yep. And then you, there's like its own, is there a language Creole? Is like yes. a type of, so that's what makes Louisiana unique, is it has its own fucking language. Yeah, well, we embraced the black shit, whereas a lot of people are like, segregate, segregate. Right. Whereas we took it in and we added it all in this big pot and made it a culture gumbo. Yeah, do you know how to speak Creole? No, 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 I run from them. They're terrifying human beings. <laughs> and what are what are they ethnically, Creoles? It's like a little half black. It's kind of like if a black and a redneck raped each other. Wow. You know? yeah. yeah. It's toothless, but That's... blue collar, a camo hat, but also kind of like dirty and raunchy and port. port. I work on the docks and I got a big truck, but I can also beat the shit out of you. You know, and I can speak French kind of weirdly. It's a, it's a weird mix. That is a weird mix, but that's very progressive. It's like if rednecks and blacks... That's what you want. Those are the two groups you want together. That's the most true. progressive. That's more progressive than sort of like a, a, a Bernie Sanders rally. Right. Bernie Sanders rally are oddly very white. Very conservative. Very white and conservative. Yeah. Like if you did a show for Bernie fans, you'd say this and that, and they'd be like, oh, I'm like, what are you, Reagan's wife? Like, yeah. you can't even take a joke. And I talk about a sex thing. You're clenching your pearls. I'm like, I thought you were all progressive and fun. Yeah. You got blue hair, whore. Yeah. Use it. <laughs> What, which one is it? Are you are you uh, a foot loose, no dancing, or are you open minded? You know, yeah, it, it's it's phony. I think they've kind of like switched sides, and it's like yes. it's interesting when you talk to comedians. Comedians always talk about how much funner it is to perform for conservative yeah, audiences. Yeah, it's true. But you can't be conservative in the business. Ah, you can't be conservative in the business. Great point. You're tap dancing all these. What's more accepted? What's better? Because uh, I think there's only one out of the closet conservative. Who, conservative thought. I think it's McConaughey, and he's just like so big, right? You know, Adam right. Sandler keeps it on the low. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way with that money and like running your own business. There's no way, yeah, that you vote left. Well, it's just so silly to just pin yourself down as to one completely across the board. I'm all this. Like, can't you have a couple ideas here and a couple ideas? Isn't that the uh, the definition of of open minded and 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 maybe liberal even? Yeah, you know, like. You, you open for Louis C.K.? What are you, a conservative? Like, no, it's incredibly liberal. I believe in rehabilitation. I think a guy should have another shot, and I, I'm, I'm not shunning him out of society because I disagree with him. Like, that's liberal. Right, right. It's all been cut, you know, it's all out of whack. Yeah, things have kind of flip-flopped a little bit. Yes. The left is kind of acts like the right, and the right kind of acts like the left a little bit. Well, if you notice. Or they used to be, the way yeah. it used to be. Yeah, if you notice, everything that kind of says one thing is actually the exact opposite. Like, Antifa feels very fascist. Like, oh, you don't agree with me? Then you're going to hell, I'll kill you, you piece of shit. Like, well, this feels very fascist. And then the soup, every time I meet a guy who's, like, super non, like, against racism, I'm like, I know you. You would never live around black people. Right, you right. Know? You would, you're in a gated community. Right, right. I always felt like you're supposed to be liberal on the gram. Yeah. And then in conservative in your accountant's office. Perfect. That's Perfect. kind of how it works, right? That's a successful guy. That's what you got to do. That's what people, I mean, you can't tell me like a lot of these celebrities when they get into their accountant's office are are asking their accountant to find ways for them to pay more taxes to help the poor. Good point. I mean, you know, but if you post it on the gram, that's all people, the, the accountant's meeting happens in private. Right. Whereas in public, you do, you, you want to appear like you care about people yes. and- you know, you, you know, you're for the common man and all, all these elites are like, hey, we're we're in we're in bed with Amazon. We're in bed with Pfizer. I'm like, uh, shouldn't you be helping the mom and pop? Yeah, I thought that's what you were saying uh, online. But I guess that's bullshit. There should be like a new thing. Like if you take up a cause or you post something, you should take your checkbook out immediately or, yeah. gi or give your job up. Yes. Which brings me to my question. I want to know what you think about Ellery Smith. Do you think she should have been fired? 
Well, that's a tough one because... First of all, we know who she is, so mission accomplished, that's pretty good. Maybe there's no such thing as bad press, Eminem style. No, no. We I forgot Eminem so. used to be hates the gays, and then he he hugged Elton John, and he got away with oh, all yeah. those homophobic lyrics. That's true. You know? Wow. You ever think about point. that? No, yeah. no. Well, maybe we got to get Kramer out there hugging black folk, you know? <laughs> Like, is that the is that the cure the hug? I maybe, didn't know that. Maybe it's the hug. I mean, Mike Tyson also got away with with, with like rape. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, like he, who knows if he did it, but like right. he got convicted of it. Right, right. And then he did a one man show, and now he's like cuddly. See, I I don't love the firing. I mean, look, what she did was fucked up. Just come out of the blue because Asian shit is a hashtag now. So let me uh, see if I can get on board with this. So it's so clear what she was doing. It was obviously a ploy and and a setup and fake, but. I like that she got lambasted because she was being a cunt, but I don't like the firing because right. then that kind of justifies what happened to Shane. Right. So right. it's tough, but it's I a, like that she got her ass kicked a little. That's that's a tough one. If you don't know, Ellery Smith, she tweeted, she tweeted about Shane Gillis, who was fired from SNL for uh, a podcast. Yes, yeah, where a he slur. said he said a slur. He said a slur. He was actually saying the slur as someone back then. I know. I who, know. But what can you do? He probably said so many other things. He was like, I'll take that one. Well, you know what's fun is not a lot of people defended her because even like the super wokey people were kind of like, yeah, you're on your own, sister. You you dug that grave. Yeah. Which yeah. I liked. And even, she didn't even defend it. I, I liked her. To, she said, I deserve this. I still believe in consequence culture. Wow. So yeah, that's what she said. She says, I still believe in consequence culture. So she was almost like, I feel like when you go like that generation, Gen X, um, millennials, when you, when, you, when you perform for the, you can almost kind of see them whipping... Like you, yeah. you say so when you say something that's like kind of like uh, an edgy joke, and they want to laugh. You can kind of see them like the way Catholic priests probably struggle around boys. They just yeah. kind of <laughs> you see their face, just kind of like you can feel like they, you know they're going to go home and like belt themselves. Yeah, exactly. Another group that's always preaching this constantly, this, and they're actually fucking kids. Or the gay, the the senator who's like gays are going to hell, then he's getting blown by the guy in the in the office. Yeah, because if you think about. If you are some type of predator, a sociopath, psychopath, the best way is to act like you're the opposite. Exactly. That's the best way to hide. Exactly. Nobody's going to... Cosby's the last person you're going to suspect who's having sex with unconscious women. Great point. The first Great person point. I would think is Jason Rouse. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is, but that would be... But he's probably never done it. Right. Because he's out in the open. But Cosby was having sex with unconscious women. Yeah, good point. That's why Mr. Rogers was such a mind fuck, because he didn't fuck anybody. <laughs> that we know of. That we know of. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that it could be. I mean, John Wayne Gacy was a clown. Yeah, exactly. So perfect, it's perfect example. Perfect way to lure him in. You know, like we're comedians, so we come off as good people, but we're not. Yes, yes. We're horrible hangs. <laughs> we're just... <laughs> What's about, it's about me? Is anything about me? Is anything about me? Yeah, you're right. We're big narcissists. That's why I love these cum guzzling comics who go, I just love spreading joy and laughter. It's like, ah, oh, shut up, you fucking douche. You just want the selfish paycheck and you want everybody to high five you and then when you, you want to go to your hotel and jerk off. <laughs> yeah, because we're, uh, we're weird people. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, um, if me and you were just in here having this conversation without a podcast, it would be awkward. This right. is right. You'd, would you feel awkward if it was just me and you in here talking? Uh, at first, but I, I could get over because you're also a, a fellow comic is right. easier right. than if just some rando. Right. So that's easier, and I, and I like you, and I'm a fan of yours, and all that, and I think we have a similar thinking. But whiteness, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> purity, you know. But uh, yeah, if it was me and this guy, I'd be shitting blood. <laughs> No offense, you're just like a normal human being, he's whereas I am 20, not. 20, no, yeah, he's just a 23 year old kid from Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And nothing wrong with you. I'm saying I'm the I'm the psycho. <laughs> right. That's why dating is tough for a comic. Right. It is tough. Yeah, it's tough. But there is something about. I feel like uh, we have a comfort zone when we know there's an audience. Yes. Whereas in one to one, it's like we we just like I gotta go and we're just out of here. So true. Dave yeah. Chappelle said, "I only feel comfortable on stage." Yeah, is what he's doing still comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I try not to shit on comics <laughs> openly. We're in not public. shitting on. I'm just curious. He's. I saw him uh, when I did Rogan. Rogan. Him and Rogan oh, were wow. doing shows, and they. So I went to see them live. Yeah. And he is the fun. Dave Chappelle so live funny. is the funniest. Yeah, but it wasn't one of those nights where he was where he was uh, giving a fiery sermon. Mm. It was one of those nights where he was being funny. Yeah, I think he's earned the right to do those fiery sermons, right? 
He's earned the right to do whatever he wants, and yeah. anybody can do whatever they want on stage, but you can't shit on Nanette and then, like, Dave. Exactly. That's my my whole thing. Yeah. So I mean, Nanette was kind of doing for lesbians what Dave is currently doing for his people. Yeah, and yeah. I just like jokes. I like funny. So you can do your sermons, just don't act like you got some new shit popping. Like, hey, check out my new set. Right. And then it's, like, even that 842 thing, I was like, I get it. It's a powerful message, but, like, I need a yuck. Right. I need a zinger, <laughs> buddy. Or, or don't call it a comedy special. Right. That's all. Right. 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 And well, he's obviously brilliant. We're all fans. I'm a huge fan. I, 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 you know, I like the guy. I worship the guy. But, uh, yeah. Do you think that's part of, like, uh, the breaking down of everything? Sort that's of like what it is. I was talking about on the last episode we did, I was talking about how Serena Williams just got interviewed by Common. Mm. And I was like, you know, that accredited Peabody <laughs> Award winning journalist Common. Yeah. You know, like everyone is everything. Like what right. is even, what's the point of going to Columbia to become a journalist if you can just start a blog and call yourself? I mean, a lot of these articles True. read like Facebook posts now. Yes. You read it and you're like, is there any data in this? Did you spend any time in the field? Did right. you actually even speak to the person you're writing about? I know. And that doesn't matter. It's just got to be salacious because it's all clicks now. So as long as it's, as long as a, a retarded person got hit by a car, we're printing it. <laughs> And you're like, actually, he was uh, not retarded, and it was a red wagon. Ah, print it. Yeah. They just want the clicks. Yeah, and I, I find people, some. it seems like people make whatever they read, they interpret it for them. Yeah, It's a very narcissist. Like, it's like, because so, I recently tweeted, I said, if you call it a stimmy check, there's a 100% chance you're spending it on sneakers. sneakers. Right. Great, great tweet. And it went viral for the wrong reason. I mean, oh. it went crazy viral in, well, what do you mean on black reason? Twitter. So oh. black Twitter caught it. Saw my profile, yeah. did, doesn't know me, doesn't know I like sneakers, anything like that. And they just go, did, is he calling us the N-word? You know, that's right, basically, right. Was, and so Black Twitter just ran with it. And it was just this offensive thing where I was saying, you know, uh, all, black people just spend their money on sneakers. Right. And, um, and then after, like all these sneaker sites started reposting it as well. Oh. And then all these sneaker sites started posting memes about stimmies and how you're going to spend your stimmy check. That's great. And then there was an article that showed that sneaker sales like were through the roof or whatever. So it proved that I wasn't just talking about black people. But let's be honest. Yeah. Well, a that's... portion of those kids were black. Yes. A portion. And it's a stimmy. It's a cool word. They talk cool. You know, it's a, it's a funny and it's funny because it's true. It's true. But they got pissed about that. Because I think they made it about something that they... Right. What is that? What is going on where people take... It's like they take what you say and whatever you meant doesn't matter. They make it what they want it to mean. Yeah. And then they just run with it. Right. And then if you go, no, that's not true, they never go, oh, shit, sorry, man. That's the problem. It's okay to run with it. That's, we've all done that since the beginning of time. Sandwich artist. You know, it's, it's perceived in a different way. <laughs> but like... It's the fucking YouTube and, I mean, the uh, social media where you can just say your thoughts immediately without thinking. No one's sitting down going, what does he mean by that? They just go, fuck you, gut instinct, I'm, I'm killing you. And then you go, it's like Bill Burr thing on the Grammys. He's a racist. Well, here's him and his wife. Crickets. Right, right. What, what happened to, uh, hey, I'm sorry, I called you a horrible thing. Just right. o openly in public. Where's the apology? We don't hold anybody to that. This guy shit on the cellar once and said it was this bigoted, racist place. Oh, yeah. Gnome proved him wrong. And then he wrote another article to the paper, and they didn't print that one. Right. They'll print the first one calling you a racist, but they won't reprint the other one because there's no... First of all, you have to admit guilt. And secondly, it's like, that's not that exciting. Right. We were that, wrong. That was Guy Brenham wrote that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he showed up, and he talked to them like a man, and it was, all, it was a great conversation. But I think he stepped a little bit, overstepped a little bit. What do you think's going on in society? What do you think this is? I it's think like, it's too it's many voices. Too many voices. I think it's too many. We've always had too many voices, but now you can broadcast them. Right. And we listen to all of them. That's the problem. That's why Burr's so great, because he goes, yeah, they're mad at me, but who cares? Right. And then you just move on with your life. We give it too much weight. We go, everybody's upset. It's going viral. Everybody's pissed off. All right. Well, they won't be in 20 minutes when uh, Biden falls down the stairs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, yeah, we, we give it too much, uh, well, what's the leverage? I don't know what the word is, but... Too it, much important. Yeah, we give yeah. it too much importance. And then that's a headline. This this racist guy is talking about sneakers. Like, you don't even know if I'm racist. I right. like sneakers. Like, slow down. And right. isn't it kind of racist to assume I'm racist because I'm white? Right, right. But that's a whole other bag of hammers. <laughs> And I just hate that this is all we uh, this is all we talk about now is this shit because it's so that's why 
Cancel culture is not real. And look, we're all sick of that term, but it's not about canceling and firing and all that shit. It's about the vibe. Right. It's all we're thinking about. It's all, everybody, every podcast I do, they go, the, the mics turn off and they go, can we delete that second part? I don't yeah. want to get canned. I don't want right. to get in trouble. You're like, oh, I thought it didn't exist. But it's just that thing in the air. You right. listen to a podcast from 2014 and you listen to one from two weeks ago, they're very tame. They're much milder. Yeah. And that's what the culture is. It's that feeling, that shit, that, oh, fuck, am I going to get popped? Am I? Uh, it, and that's not healthy. We're yeah. losing our hair. People are killing themselves. Everybody's depressed. It stinks. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like we're all in the mafia waiting to get yes! whacked. Yeah. And we're getting whacked by some virgin incel. <laughs> it's so <laughs> annoying. Yeah, it's really like... Uh... I, I did a character, Maurice, I couldn't even, I couldn't do that character. Couldn't now. do it today. I could not do that character today. And that's the weird thing is that people love that fucking skank. I mean, they love that Puerto Rican <laughs> and he's filled out Caroline's multiple times. And look at the joy you're, you would lose. All those people would lose all that fun and joy because somebody's upset. Yeah. And you know, she's a, she's an interesting one because all her fans are, were Hispanic, black and, uh, and gay. Yes. So it's like, they can't, they can't touch me on that. Like uh, loved it. the journalist who covers us. It's funny. In 2021, there's a journalist who like sifts <laughs> through podcasts now. I know, I know. He's the one. He, he's tried to get me on a tweet or something because even though Maurice is staring him right in the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he, he can't do anything with it because the people who he's purportedly talking on behalf of uh, love it. That's a great so point. It's really funny. Isn't that funny? That, that kind of web of wokeness, it really holds you down like... Like, I mean, look, hip hop has said some horrific shit, misogynist, homophobic, but it's like uh, Adam Kroll has got that great line like, no one from PETA is at the player's ball. Right. They're all wearing fucking uh, fur and mink and chinchilla, but they're like, eh, we're going to let that slide. We yeah. don't want to get shot or anything. I'm working on behalf of the animals, but in good neighborhoods. Exactly. It's all safe. The, all the protests, too, were always in good neighborhoods. Like the defund the cops protests were always in like right, Carroll right. Gardens in Brooklyn or Hollywood. Right, right. They were never in the neighborhoods where actually the people would be affected by the defunding of the police. I know, and you read all these charts and shit and they, the black people in those neighborhoods were like no no police yeah. we need them i'm trying to get home with my groceries yeah because in some ways the defund the police is a, there's a little racist vibe to that because you're going like but like because you're going like uh what about the people who are concerned about criminals right you know and you're because you're you're living in a good neighborhood going like stop stopping stop you know stopping uh, stop stopping black people right and then the black people who live in those neighborhoods are going like they're not stopping me right i'm not a criminal they're stopping him yeah i need somebody to stop the criminals and you're yeah. going like you're thinking about race more than they are exactly well again it's perception it's all how it goes through their brain yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> but i feel like this is all so obvious like i'm not that smart of a guy like you're a smart guy but i'm not that smart i'm not of a that guy. smart at all i mean i do comedy i mean we're doing a podcast i mean that's another thing about 2021 is people think they're i mean that's i'm on true. twitter listening to some guy who's a fucking you know he's talking to me about ayn rand i'm like is this a freshman dorm or whatever right. he's talking calling him he's a he's a liberal or a conservative or a fucking or a libertarian or yeah. whatever i'm going like this is like a freshman dorm conversation yes smart yes. people can do math they can do science they can play with computers. Right. Otherwise, you're dumb. Right. Otherwise, you're right. dumb. Completely. Yeah. I agree. I'm it, dumb. You're dumb. We're dumb. Most people are just regurgitating shit they've heard or read. Yeah. You know, you, you see it like, that's problematic. Like, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I said my gay roommate. You're saying, oh, you heard gay, and I'm on stage, I'm a white guy, so you just assume it's probably, you don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know Trump was going to win? When he won? No, I had he no. Idea. I was I was out at a bar, drunk with a girl, trying to get laid, and the thing was on TV. I don't I don't know anything about politics. That's one thing about Trump. He made us learn about politics. I didn't yeah. know what a fucking senator was. He well, he had to learn about politics too. What he, was <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm learning too with you guys. But I was like, oh, here uh, Hillary's gonna win. I'll get laid. Pro women. Here we go. And then uh, he he won, and the whole bar was just silent. It was in the East Village. It was crazy. Oh, you were in the, you were you were in liberal, liberal town when that. I happened. guess so. Yeah. yeah. You know, Trump Trump winning was almost like if your friend became president. Of the class, he's yeah. Like, he, like, he just took over the class. Like, all right, fellas, like, what are we doing? We're fucking, yeah. yeah exactly. We're drinking. We're partying. We're we're calling him the name we used to call yes. him. And we're not getting in trouble. Oh, her! I grabbed by the pussy yeah. over there. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I ask only because as comics, we kind of travel the country and we score it. We get like a we get a temperature on things. And I remember just like doing a little bit of the road, feeling like I, he's got a better chance to win than people think he does. Definitely, we're yeah. in, we're so in that bubble, and we we we're so elitist. We think we're better than everybody. Um, and then but, you hit the road, and you're like, wow, this is a different this is a different vibe out here. Way different. The road is so cool. Like these cities, like Nashville 
and uh, Denver, like these kind of sleeper cities, which are blowing up now. Raleigh, yeah. North Carolina, nobody's talking about Raleigh, but now it's like booming. All these football players and rich people are moving there. And they're these sleeper towns that were just like that guy in the corner who always got laid, yeah. but he never talked about it. And then New York's sitting there like, I got the biggest dick, I'm so cool. And now everybody's leaving here. Yeah, yeah. And they just hung back and then blew up. Yeah. Pretty cool how that happened. Yeah, it's almost like cities, are like they're like the alt scene, like alt cities right. are making it now. Right, you yes. Know? Like New York was a club comic, LA club comic, and now all these other smaller, unknown right. They started their own scene, these cities. They started their own scene, exactly. They, yeah, it's wild. They're blowing up Austin, North Carolina, Atlanta. Nashville, yeah. A, a lot of it is probably because you don't have to be, so much of our economy now is digital. Mm. So you don't have to be in New York that or too. LA. That too. Even if you're doing banking, if you're doing, everything is digital. You don't even have to be at the, I think this is going to change everything. There probably I won't know. even be any, any um, you know, corporate, like there won't be, Offices, I know. they'll cut back on that. I mean, so what are we gonna do with these sky? We got a zillion put homeless people in them. Yeah, hey, why not? Yeah, why not? Right? Yeah, I mean, every elevator in New York's got shit in it anyway. You yeah, know, might as well plan it. And you know, New York will become like an artist haven again. People will come you and think? try to make it. Yeah, throw artists in there. They made Soho hot. They'll make Midtown hot. <laughs> right, right. They'll make it gay. They'll make it hot. It'll be fun. It'll you know, there's plenty of things to do. Yeah, all right. I, I'm I'm a little nervous because I love New York so much, and I finally got a good apartment. I own another place. I'm making a little real estate moves, and uh, I feel like right when I got cooking in New York, it's who knows what'll happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of happened to us all. It'll probably come back though. Here's the thing: New York's not a bad place to invest in. If New York doesn't make it, then America's over. Ah. I suspect it may be over. Once, really? Once people start going like Austin's the hot town, you're going like, get the fuck out of here. I what do you know, got barbecue food and and, and four thousand pound people and Elon Musk? But that's gonna be the capital of the greatest <laughs> empire the world has ever known. We're done. But they probably said that about uh, Los Angeles in in nineteen oh one or whatever it was. Like it's a bunch of orange fields and Mexicans. This ain't gonna blow up. True. Good point. Good I mean, point. I don't know. I don't know anything. Yeah. But no, you're probably right too. Even in New York, they're probably like, there's just a bunch of fucking tall Dutch guys walking around. Yeah. Yeah. It's a swamp basically with wooden shoes or whatever they were right. doing. Hey, right. Yeah. Good New point. Amsterdam. Yeah. It used to be New Amsterdam before that. But who knows? And 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 it's an exciting time to be alive. I and mean, if you can shut off all the horrific negativity and bullshit on the internet, it, we're in a pretty cool time. I mean, a pandemic hit. We got to live through it, see it. Sure, it was dicey, but. We saw it. Things are changing. Cities are blowing up. Cities are crumbling. We had a fucking reality star president. We got to watch all that. You know, BLM and Me Too and uh, trans people exist. Whatever it is, we're seeing it all. It's fun. I Yeah. I mean, I, trans people are fun. Imagine like our kids may start half their life as one sex and then the other half as the other. Pretty cool. Yeah. You get to 40, you're like, you know what? Let me find out what it's like to be fucked. Let me find out what it's like to be fucked by the opposite sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been there a few nights, but <laughs> what do you think is going to happen with the color? Like, when we can really change color, that's when things are going to get weird. Well, I said on the po last episode, didn't I? I said, I, I feel like Rachel Dolezal was kind of like a pioneer, underappreciated. Yeah. If you think about people who want to end racism, it's like people who want to become the other. That's yes. the farthest you can go in yes. loving the other race. Is Good like, point. I'm going to become and live and act like one right. of you. Right. So that's like the biggest, that's the biggest I compliment. It it's is. the most progressive thing you can do. I guess so. But it's like you're holding a sign for those people. Well, I became one of them. But black people don't fuck around. It's no. almost like taking steroids. Like, hey, I'm going to be buff. And you're like, bitch, I've been in the gym for 60 years. You right. know, and you get to just be buff. You don't have to go with the no cab and the police and the whole thing. So I get it why they don't like it, but it's going to happen. Right, right. I mean, if you can identify as a gender, why can't you identify as being 15? I'm 15 now. Like, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, right. it, it, it opens the door. But let, don't you think, like, Sean King, or yeah. like, if you get away with it for, if you go to a black college, like Sean King, and you get away with that, even if you get found out, don't you think black community should just be like, you got us? Right, right, when you were yeah. in an all-black school and nobody suspected it, you win, you're black. Like, there should be a certain amount, like a, a statute of limitations yeah. on where you could get called on it, even if you found out. You're like, if you live as a black Good guy point. and everyone thinks you're black for 20 years, Maybe you win, maybe. Yeah. And also this point about Rocha Dolezal, I, I don't blame black people for not for getting fooled by her. Right. Because I think often like there's an aura yes. about a girl with a big ass. Yes. That like black guys can't see past the big ass. Right. So if you got a big, fat, juicy ass, 
and you're even like real pale, yeah. they just can't see it. Sort of like when you're playing the Yankees, you just get blinded by the pinstripes. Right. You know what I mean? You're just like, <laughs> it's the aura of it. They're going like, yeah. we're playing the Yankees, the mystique, and you just lose because yes. you're playing the Yankees. I think they see that big ass, they're just going like, that's got to be a system. And they just can't. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was the pinstripes. The pinstripes being those fat ass. She's got a fat, she's a thick girl. Oh, yeah. She look. I'd, I'd plow it. But uh, you got to admit, we're all animals at the end of the day. Like, Obama is half white, okay? And everybody just calls him the black president. And then Rich, uh, what's her name? Meghan Markle is half white, and she looks white. Right. So it really is more about the shade. Right. It really comes down to what you look like. Right. And uh, I think if Rachel Dolezal looked a little blacker f- physically, skin-wise, I think she'd she might get by. She pulled it off for a little while with the cornrows and everything. I know. Maybe I know. we need to all be more Creole. We need to be more l- like New Orleans. It'd be nice. Yeah. We'd be a little looser. I mean, that is a loose town, but we get nothing done. Right. We don't get shit done. New York, you come here, it's pedal to the metal. New Orleans like, ah, quit writing jokes. Kick back. Have a high life, you loser. Now, here's the thing about you to change, you know, to change topics a little Please. bit, which is good, is like you come from a laid back town, a cool town, but you are... You're a workaholic. Ah, that's you true. You work. Yeah, well, that's just my drug of choice to not think. Uh-huh. You know, I got five sets tonight. I have a joke about it in my act. of like, being late is like a drug. And I think working is a drug, too, because you're you're not thinking about, oh, I got a tiny dick. You're like, <laughs> I got to make it to that show. I got to get on the F train. I got to get off on this door. I got to run to that. I'm doing these jokes tonight. I got to do 15 minutes. I got to close strong. Then go third on the show, run out, and... And uh, that's why I started on the podcast is because you want to just, I think that Sisyphus thing of rolling up the, the barrel or not the barrel, the boulder the, the boulder, up the hill. The hill. Yeah. That, that's what life's all about. It's about the journey and the work. Now, sure, I could sit back every now and then go, hey, I got some TV credits. I got some money. I got a girlfriend with huge cans. Like, <laughs> enjoy it for a second, you twat. But right. I, I, uh, I just, you get, you get involved. You get too wrapped in the work and I, I forget to breathe. Is that because you're... Are you like that with everything? Are you like work out like that, or is it just comedy? Are you in love with comedy? I'm you're, so in love with comedy. You're so in love with comedy. Yeah, right? I think it's so important. And my life was meaningless, and I was such a loser, and I was so sad. I was a dork. I was a skateboard drinking forties in the alleyway, you know, trying to finger pop and uh, learn a, a, a trick, and chain wallet, gritty white rat kid you know yeah yeah yeah. and uh then i just found kind of i fell in love with it and my brain connected with it like the way comedy is feels like it fits me right almost like an autistic guy can see a, a bunch of toothpicks and count them rain man like, yeah yeah comedy worked with my shit yeah and you're prolific like that like rain man kind of you, you tweet the jokes you yes. write the jokes you write a lot yes you know i try to yeah, yeah and you know do you know that actually we influenced a young mark norman because we did uh, Bill Burr, Comedy to Go. He saw that when you were young and you loved it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't that forget was... anything. My memory's a steel trap. Yeah, you do have a great I, I remember chasing you once to try to give you my ex-girlfriend's yes! jewelry. Yes! I chased him into the train trying to give him jewelry. We got shithoused yeah. on a Brooklyn night in 1988. I don't know when that was, <laughs> but... Uh... And things were so different then. It was fun. There, there wasn't that that va- that fear all the time. No. You said crazy shit on set. You were like one of my heroes. I'd go to bar four every Sunday, and you said crazy. You talk about trans porn, how you jerked off to it, and you loved it. I remember being like, "Whoa, this guy's the real deal." It yeah. felt Stan Hopey, Lenny Brucey, that real backroom gritty shit that yeah. I love that, that you was can't a, get anymore. That was a legendary show, Bar Four. Oh. We, you were there all the time. All the time. All the time. There. Louis Katz, Ali Wong, Soder, Nate. I mean, it was a great group. A lot of guys like, ah, I'm not doing that shit. It goes till four in the morning. It's too far out. And I'm like, I live for that shit. That's yeah. what it's all about. You were at all those shows. I Wherever it. there was a show, you were there. Yes, yeah. completely. That's what gets annoying when people are like, hey, where'd this guy come from? You're like, bitch, I, I've been running this town, running around this town for... 15 years. You have been, yeah. Yeah, doing a lot of work. So yeah, you said that, you told me once you saw that, our, remember that comedy to go we did with Bill Burr? On Prob- the playground? Yes. Yes. We did that probably, he didn't even remember. I remember going, but Bill was like, oh, that was you guys? I was like, yeah, that we yeah, did that. That Dead was like films. early 2000s we did that. He was so much more wiggery back then, by the way. If you watch it, you're like, damn, he sounds like Eminem. Yeah, well, he had like, yeah, he had Adidas on back then, yeah. and everything like that, yeah. But, and that was before he was like Burr. Of course. But you saw it and you 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 connected with it in some way? I, I mean, just liked it. It was kind of uh, like, I mean, I hate to say it, but it was like, I, oh, I could shoot something like this because I loved him. I just loved all those tough crowd kind of generation. Right. And uh, I saw that and I was like, 
oh, I can shoot something like this. Right. And I remember it connected. I was a big YouTube guy just sucking up anything because this is before there was a podcast on every corner. Right. You know, it was like <laughs> you had to find comedy. You had to right. s- search for it, which was a better time because <laughs> people left us the fuck alone, right, by the way. Right. But yeah, yeah, I just sucked up anything and I remember finding that. That's that, true. That's was that before you started comedy? Probably, yeah. I started in 06. Yeah, and we recorded that like early 2000s. Wow. Yes. Look at that. And it's kind of true because when comedy was just in clubs or on TV, it was like you had to come into the land of comedy. Now we're on the internet, so we come into people's lives and they mistake that. Like they'll go, it's an offensive tweet where you're going like, bitch, why are you following Yeah, me? exactly. But they go, hey, it came into my thing. Yeah. And you're going like, she's kind of got a point. Right. You know, it's like, whereas comedy, you pay, people pay and they go there, and they go there to yes. hear uncomfortable stuff, or, or to uh, to hear uncomfortable stuff made funny. Yes, and so it's sort of like they're coming into our court. Yeah, now we go into their world and do podcasts and stuff like that. But even still, they're kind of like, don't listen to it. Then I know, you know? I completely. If someone retweets difficult. it, don't read it. I, yeah. don't, I don't know what to tell you. Or disagree and move on with your fucking life. Get a hobby. Kill yourself. Something. Something. Jesus, like Daniel Tosh doing that rape joke thing. They put that on the news, and you're like, yeah, that was meant for the club. That yeah. was in that room. Now you can't take it out of context and fuck with it. But is comedy, comedy's like, uh, did it kind of like save you in a sense? Like you were oh, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. So it's like the one thing that kind of grabbed you, and then yes. sort of that's what you became passionate about. Yeah, because I you're always, like a comedy savant. You go all, you're all comedy. All comedy, yeah. yeah. And I, I love it, and I, I fell in love with it, and it was all I had. So, yeah. and my parents are intellectual, they're successful, they're like book reading, nerd, like, they're workaholics too, so maybe that's part of it, but... It's gotta be. I was the idiot in the family. My brother went to the, he went to Berkeley, he went to the Peace Corps in Africa to teach kids and all this shit, and I was a skateboard, you know, dweeb. I was a fucking retard. I was an idiot. And uh, I had to find something, and I remember I find it coming, and you're like, ah, oh, I got it. Right. This is it. If it, it, it was... It was like a soulmate, seeing a soulmate. Did you go to college or no? I did, only because my parents made me, but yeah. I finished online just because I wanted to move to New York. <laughs> you finished online before? I quit college, I moved to New York, and they said, you just do it for us. And I said, all right, and I did it online, which is a fucking joke, yeah. by the way. You just got the book open, you know, doing this shit. Yeah, pre-COVID finishing online, that's not really a degree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you too? Well, you you did it during COVID, though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Technically, it was online because of COVID. Like, you finished before they had Zoom. Yes. So yes. you were just, like, filling out some forms. Exactly. Yeah. That's all it was. It was babysitting <laughs> with a computer. I had the book open, literally. So, yeah. Or you could Google with another window. I mean, it was so easy. Wow, so you were, like, a disappointment to your family until yes. you found Kamini. Big disappointment. Yeah. Bedwetter, weird-looking braces. <laughs> Plus, the black neighborhood was, like, we, we really that really, like, you know, nobody talks about, like, I know we talk about racism and all that, but, like, those kids fucking hated me. I mean, they would chase me. It was scary. You didn't really want to go outside. That's why my brother's, like, this computer genius, because he's like, I'm not going out there. I'll do right. DOS, right. you know? <laughs> he was reading books about DOS and all this shit. Now he's a big programmer. He's doing well. But, but he uh, also joined the Peace Corps, too. Yeah, yeah, in Africa. Wow, that's, so he's a real good guy. He's the real deal. He's a real deal. No, no Twitter activist. He went and helped. He taught them math in French in Guinea. Wow. Yeah, and it was in huts. I went and visited him. It yeah. was a, I was there three days. I wanted to kill myself. Right. He was there two years. Yeah. You yeah, you guys are different in that way, probably. Yeah, yeah. We both yeah. go for it. Yeah. But I couldn't do that shit. Yeah. I guess comics are good people because we do a good thing for people by making them feel better. It's a symptom of, of our selfishness though. But, so it but works we're out. so self yeah, we're, that's what I was about to say. It's like we're not great guys. Nah. No, I mean, we're well, not great people. We'll help the women out. are like animals. The female comics, they're like animals. They're yeah, closer they're, to animals than anything. They're so vicious. That's my vicious. Nick Cannon moment. They're animals. Yeah, they, they can be vicious. <laughs> like men will say a horrible joke or, or do something horrible. To, like the women will try to ruin you in a weird way. It's almost like high school where they give you an eating disorder. We'll beat you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the punch will heal. Yeah, I'm kidding. But it's we comics in general, male and female, we're very narcissistic we want to be heard we want to be looked at yeah that's that's a quality that works when you're performing for people who are paying to be silent but it's not great in life yes it's not great in life to always be talking and so true thinking you're cute and shit like that like what i got to say is cute and like you got to listen to me and stuff like that yeah it's gross it's kind of gross it's real i'll be at my girl's like christmas dinner and i'm like stop trying to hold court like stop trying to tell a story they're all eating and it's nice and there's a fire and there's a waspy new england family and i'm like how about these 
fair, whatever the fuck, you know? And I'm like, they're like, gee, I'm doing okay. I'm getting some laughs, but I'm like, what am I doing? I have to tell myself to cool it. I'm giving right. myself the light. Right. You got to, you got to find like that. Cause either we're like going too much performing or we're like reclusive yes. off in a corner smelling our fingers. We have two modes. Like if you, do you think if it wasn't for comedy that Joe Mackey would sniff seats? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy, but he would be doing some weird thing. You build model airplanes, yeah. sniffing the glue. <laughs> and if, if there was no comedy, Sam Morell might be staring at a wall reciting Nick's facts. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Joe would just be blinking into the sunset. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. You know, Soda would just be doing voices in the mirror. Yeah. You know, we need an outlet. Yeah, he'd be doing a radio show for himself in the mirror <laughs> in Tucson, Arizona. Right, right. With his horrible, horrible, weird dad body that he's had since he was 24 that guy was built like a dad since i met him in his early 20s i know and get a button down will you you're 41 he's got these hoodies that are way too big i mean he dresses like he's going to a nirvana concert in 91 he's he's almost 40 now Uh, (laughs) button his button his shirt up a little bit yeah Yeah. i'm no one to talk about clothing but like geez he's a handsome guy he's tall he's got the voice like he could really run this town he could run this town but you know and also loosen up yeah loosen up those fucking those those the shoelaces. He ties them a little tight. They f- kind of flop. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. Now you were a guy who fell in love with one jacket and you ran with it before yes. the before the white supremacists took it over. <laughs> you were a Fred Perry. No, Lacoste. Oh, it was a Lacoste one. The little gator. Yeah, it was the Lacoste. I thought. Yeah, it wasn't Fred Perry. It was Lacoste. Seinfeld has a theory that was that com- French because you were French. No, I just found it in a thrift store, and I was like, wow, I'll never own any of the cost. It right. was so out of my wheelhouse. You were poor then. Yeah, yeah very yeah. poor. And I remember being like, whoa, and it's kind of cool. It's got the lines. I look like a French soccer player. <laughs> and I just loved it, and I just was like, oh, this will be my thing. You know, yeah. Steve Jobs wears that shit every day. I'll wear this every day. Yeah, I mean, look, you were, you, and then you got past the cost. I got through it. I, got, I, had a, I lost it. And it was devastating. It was like a heroin addiction. I had to like get over it. I had withdrawals about the jack. I'd go to my closet. Oh. Ah, yeah. and it was horrible. And then a year went by and someone found it behind a chest of drawers at a bar. I, I thought t- you were going to say at another girl's house and go, oh, <laughs> damn it. No, I left it at a bar because I blacked out and they were like, what's this? And they pulled it out. It was at the creek. Oh, that shithole. Yeah, and it was covered in rat shit and dust. Dead bugs and yeah. Yeah, I had to get it dry cleaned and then I tried it on and, I, and a couple friends were like, just, just, let it go, man. So yeah. now it's in my closet. So again. that's what killed it, yeah. But you were kind of obsessive about the jacket. Yes. Yeah, comedians. There, there's a. We all have a little bit of a slight mental illness. I yes. Think. I mean, Nate would wear Vanderbilt uh, shorts. Tie, shorts underneath his jeans. Under his jeans in the summer. Yeah, and he would have like a Vanderbilt yeah. uh, red. He'd have to have one item of Vanderbilt on at all times. So true. This and I would have to have at least one panic attack a day. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, what, remember what the phase I went through? Just panic attacks and. I mean, I had a good reason. I was a victim of a violent crime, but but I think I would have had those panic attacks even if it wasn't PTSD. Because we're just so self-involved. I'm I going know. like, oh, something's wrong with me. Yes. Something's wrong with me. Yes. And someone's going, what is it? And it's like, I'm scared. I'm nervous. Something's wrong with me, 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 and me, And then me. social media just kicks that up a notch and we're all fucked. Yeah. So. Well, we, what does this panic attack look like? What is it? What is it? Have you had one? I think I have, but I've never defined it. What is it? What is a panic attack? Give me the uh, actual... What it is. Yeah, like, are you are you sweating? Are you freaking out? Are you hyperventilating? What yeah, you start sweating. Your body kind of goes into fight or flight mode. Whoa. So you just feel like, uh, you know, fight or flight mode, like you either want to fight or you flee. So you just, you're, all your blood rushes to the middle. So your arms kind of get tingly and numb. Whoa. Because that's just an instinct. Like yeah. when you, the adrenaline pumps, uh, it happens because uh, the limbs, if they get bit, you'll bleed out slower. So like if an animal bites your arms... It's uh, the, all the blood is here, so mm. you bleed out a little slower. Whoa. So it's all evolutionary and biological and stuff like that. But your body, like your mind is too, too nervous, like too kicked up. It's too yeah. jacked up. So it's having a flight or flight reaction when there's nothing to worry about. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Wow. It's, it's, it's got to be like a consequence of modernity. It's like things are too easy. We're not meant to just I, sit I around. I think you're right. I think you're right. We're not meant to be this safe. Yes. We've never have been. The Industrial Revolution just happened. Right. Like, it's just so new. Before that, like, you know, people were like dying, would die. They, yeah. Modern medicine. It's all very new. Very new. I mean, just war was such a big looming thing. Like, oh, my brother died in war. Dude, or disease. The fucking, or disease. Yeah. yeah. What was it? The, the you know, the wow, wow. 
are at the schools that get under the desk. Yeah, the, they just got to think about that. Yeah, the nuclear war. But even before that, people would just die of disease. Like, just right. like you, you'd always read, like in Russia, the, the Russia, was, and then the, in, in every footnote in Russian history is like, and then three million yeah, Russians die. Yeah, that's right. Russians just throw millions of people at death. Right. Every era of history, there's just like millions of Russians that just fucking freeze or die or so true even in civil war like more people died from disease than they did right. from war yeah because it was just so there was no anesthesia there was no they just cut your fucking leg off gangrene and malaria was yeah. big mosquitoes mosquitoes have killed more people than than isis kill everybody and it's yeah. just only really recently the turn of this last century that industrialization kind of let us kind of sit for a second and think yeah and that ain't it, good in order to think back in the day this is going to sound horrible but this is the truth in order to have a moment to think and figure things out like aristotle or even frederick Douglass or thomas jefferson slavery <laughs> you had it's to have a, shit taken care of for you, you had to have shit taken care of for you in order to sit around and kind of be a community of contemplative to be a to contemplate everything yeah you know wow that's that's uh, heavy yeah i mean that, that's the you know he pro isaac newton probably had a few that we don't know about they yeah just, he, he created electricity or whatever so they were just like all right let's not talk about uh -huh. who was taking care of the house he also died a virgin so he's not even thinking about vagina not which even thinking. that takes up nine tenths of your brain you know and one of the big things he figured out he figured out during the spanish flu when everyone was quarantining it's an interesting fact yeah how about that how about that yeah man yeah but uh, I, I don't. That theory is really not foolproof. I, yeah. I don't want to say it's a foolproof that you need slaves to, in order to think. That's that's you know, basically I, that's what it sounds true. like I said. But well, there's some truth to there's it. There's something there because yeah. the internet, like you get a package overnight. You know, you can just get everything online now. You used to have to go to the airport or call the airport. Now it's just boop, 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 boop. you yeah. know all that shit adds up. We have a lot of free time, which we think I got all this free time. I can uh, learn the piano or, or write a novel, but we don't do that, do right. we? We no. go into Netflix, we go into fucking food delivery, and we go into social media and porn. Right. And also, you think about how prevalent slavery was throughout history. I mean, it's just like, oh, I mean, uh, pyramids. Yeah, the slavery. Slavery was is the oldest. It's as old as prostitution. Slavery and prostitution, and almost every group's been enslaved at some point. Even the waspy people who did a lot of the enslaving recently were enslaved before that by Greeks and by Romans, and they were barbarians. Yeah, the Irish were slaved, and nobody likes to hear that. I feel like black people kind of cornered the slave it market. Kinda, yeah. And there's a lot of slavery, slave countries out there. Yeah, I mean, the word slave comes from Slav, from because the, they were, to the Ottomans, enslaved Greeks, the Slavic people, so they called them Slav. There yeah, I go. mean, there's been a lot of slavery. Yeah, yeah, it's and it sucks, and we're not, we're it's not horrible. defending it, but it also uh, gets, a lot of shit gets done. <laughs> they built the pyramids, and uh, yeah, I mean, but it, I don't even think we could even, a lot of these progressive ideas that we just take for granted and say like, hey, that's the right thing, I think a lot of people forget that like, that's the right thing only because we figured all this shit out. Right. And like machines right. are doing shit. And so it's like, we're free to be a little nicer to each other. Maybe in 500 years, we're going to go, can you believe in 2021, they had janitors? Yeah. They made people take out the garbage, yeah. all that shit. Because those are the modern day, you know, we all, we still need ditch diggers. Yeah. You know, but with the, with the AI and all that coming in, we're going to go, I can't believe we appointed that to some poor guy. Yeah. And I always think, like, when they call someone a nice guy, oh, he's such a nice guy. I'm like, is he really, or is he just, like, well-fed? What do you mean? Like, he can afford to be a nice guy. Oh, he's young. People want to fuck him. Right. He doesn't have to work in the field 100 hours a day. I, I learned this from being around old people. Like, when you're in an old folks' home, and you're like, a lot of them get nasty. Because the right. true who they are comes out. The only really good people I think are on this planet are if you find a sweet old person, yes. they're really a good person. Uh -huh. Because they're old and they got nothing to be sweet about. Because being old sucks. You sure. piss a hundred times a day. Your pussy's dried up. I'm sure it's very horrible. Your body, your tits, your tits are sagging. You look yeah, like shit. Yeah. You're going to die soon. You yeah. think about that every day. You can yeah. only enjoy applesauce. Your teeth are falling out. Right. And you're still sweet. You're good. But most old people are cunts, cunts. and racist. Oh, oh yeah. God, old people go in there and like, and then the people take care of them and they're going, they're fucking calling yeah. them every slur in the book. Right, the Jamaican lady gets Nobody's earful. canceling these old people. Well, they're God, allowed to get away with fucking murder. God cancels them eventually. I guess that's, so. That's what it is. So why not go hard at the end? <laughs> but if I was old, just do heroin and shit. You You're know? right, yeah. That's but a good hey. way to do it. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I think like, so... Modernity is kind of like like industrialization and now tech too. Yeah, you know, we've had that second revolution. Tech makes our lives so easy. Right. Maybe that's why everyone's pretending like they're this great person. It's because they can 
Maybe it's because it's afforded to them. They right. can sit around in San Francisco and just everything's made for them. Yes. So they're sitting around going like, I'm just a virtuous person. Like, dude, if I took one of these things away from me, you'd eat your own sister to survive. <laughs> That's a great point. We've all seen Alive or whatever those shows are like survival in the forest. It's all you out there and you ain't happy. No. Nobody's whistling Dixie while they're killing a squirrel and, and ripping the fur off. <laughs> You're right, you're right. But it, it's just how it goes, and we have too much time. And then struggle is so, uh, what's the word, in vogue? It's so hip now to be struggling. Have right. you noticed, like, every white guy is like, yeah, I'm white, but I'm on the spectrum. Right. I have depression. <laughs> I have anxiety. My dad fucked me. I'm half Jew. Whatever it is, everybody's like, we used to hide that shit. Right. I was a bedwetter. I had horrible teeth. I, had, I got braces. I would never smile. Now people are like, I went to bed. I'm struggling. Please, I'm one of the good ones. We yeah. have to we have to go in yeah. on our struggles because it's so easy now. Everything's so easy. Yeah, it's like a currency in victimhood. Almost. Yeah, now yeah. you do a one-man show about the time you got groped, you know? But it used to be like, shit, I got groped. I'm keeping that shit down. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a good time to be an Irish Catholic. Those skills are useless now. <laughs> right. Yeah, because they used to just push it down and pretend like it didn't happen. Now it's like, no, nah, dude, that's great stuff. Write a show on it. Yeah, exactly. You're going to make <laughs> millions. Thank God you got groped. <laughs> that's how we look at it. Do you think the comic's life and the normal person's life are at odds? Like, do you picture yourself having a normal life, family, or are you just a road dog? You're going, I'm going, you know, I'm flying a... Babe, I'm off to Norway to do a month uh, of in my, shows. In my head, I'm that guy. I'm yeah. just, oh, God, kids. It seems like I mean, you have a kid now. Yeah. And B Bill Burr has a kid, and Nate's got kids, and all these people have kids. Uh, Gomez has a fucking kid. Yeah. Uh, Chris D has a kid. So you're we, like, you're not saying everyone should have kids. We're just saying they do have kids. Yes, yeah. yes. And I think I would like that. I see photos, and, I, and the love. My God, the love. Like Bill Burr always says, I want to just put it in my chest. I love it so much. Right. And I think that's beautiful. That's great. You picture the catch. But uh, I also spend two days at my sister's uh, or my girlfriend's sister's house and it's crying, it's shitting, it's throwing <laughs> shit, it's puking. And you're like, I'm so glad I get to leave. Yeah. <laughs> and not that there's anything wrong with this kid. It's just a normal kid. But you're like, oh, it's so nice having uh, just a couch. I'm watching the, the Yankees game, you know. Yeah. So that part is I struggle with. That's also, I think, a... Uh, seems like a, a luxury of modernity. Yes. Because it used to be people were like, I'm going to have a kid to have a better life because my life's so shit. That, yes. And also something to do. Yeah. I got somebody to raise and help out working and, and in the house. There's a reason people have done it over generations and millions of years because there is some beauty to it, of yeah. course. Obviously, you're, you're just putting out a person into the world and you're raising them. It's amazing. But you had that old joke about we all, our parents built us a great life so we don't want to have kids right. and ruin that great life they built. That was a great bit. Yeah. And it's so true. Yeah. I used to, I, I said, my grandfather used to say, I, I worked so hard so you didn't have to. And I'm like, thank you? Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm living my dream for you right now by not working. So don't yes. be mad at me. I'm not working. That was your dream. <laughs> great, I'm living great it. The, um, but what do you think? You have a kid. Tell me. Should I do it? Is it worth it? Honestly. Yeah. I think... Uh, I do think at the end of the day, it's sort of a, a luxury question that we can ask because things are so easy and we're like, eh, and you know. Right. So I think at the end of the day, it's what you want to do. I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, you know, sure, if you want the Chinese and Mexicans to take over, don't have any kids, by all means. <laughs> that's a joke. See, that's a joke about demographics. I'm not a white supremacist. I put myself on notice, I promise. It's a joke. Do um, you have kids? Okay, yeah. okay. I think it's a it's a thing I was scared of, to be completely honest with you. It was a thing that I was scared of. Obviously, I got late. Uh, I was late, to Sure. Because I think comedians, we have arrested development to begin with. I mean, our job is to play around, and, and it takes a while to get good. And So we're a little later than everybody. But I do think when you get to your level where things are amazing and you're a known comic and you're, you're you know, you got, you, you're fortunate enough to have money and you're, you're you know, people are coming to see you. Sure. And you're, you're known. You start to think about, all right, what's what's the fifties look like? What's the sixties look yeah, like? Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly. when you go like, all right, yeah, I don't know if I want to be, you know, on the, not have a family when I'm at that age. That's what hits me. Yeah, so that that's where I think. And, and now that I have a family, yeah, it's incredible. There's, it's like you 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 go like, oh, what's the point of life? You ask those questions when you're young, and then you reproduce, and you're going, oh, the point of life is this fucking no different for me than it is a strawberry, a string bean, or a fucking hyena. Uh, We're all here to just fucking. Push out here, another here. one and die. Yes. That's really what it's for. Yeah. All this other shit is just fucking waste time. Yeah, yeah. But the thing that, like, you feel like that 
nature tug. Yeah. Where you fulfill, you feel like you fulfilled something is having a kid. I, it's it's just the simplest thing, and it's stupid. And it's, it's no different. Everything, even bacteria, fucking reproduces. You're I mean, right. Viruses. I mean, so it's like we're. It's also humbling to go like, oh, we're just a fucking evolved life form right. here to reproduce, no different than string beans. Yeah, we're a bunch of monkeys fighting on a spinning marble or whatever that <laughs> quote is. That's not mine. That's some genius guy. But it's true. Yeah, it's true. And yeah. I think you're right. And it just bring if everybody on Twitter had a kid. I, f- I feel like Twitter would chill the fuck out because they're wiping asses, they're st- they're putting it to bed, they have real they have a thing to do now, yeah. they have a real problem. I'll put it to you so in comedian language though, please. Whole lot of new material. Ah, uh, <laughs> but then I want to be the kid comic guy. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy, right? Going, ah, I was cleaning up. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But I think that's kind of maybe a little bit inevitable because yeah. your audience also. Here's another thing: if you want to talk, think like a comic, it's like. You're a certain age. Your audience now, a lot of them are having kids. Good point. So you want to relate to the audience. And then as you go 10 years further, they definitely have kids. Right. So it's kind of like you want to at least, because you can't, you can't continue to talk to people who are younger because they're looking at you going, why am I listening to this fucking guy? Yeah, yeah. Unless you're cool like George Carlin, you grow the ponytail, you smoke weed, you wear black. Yeah. You know, shit like that. It was also a funner time in the 50s when you could just have a kid and give it to the lady and then go <laughs> go to work, you know? Those days are over. That would be a funny uh, that would be a funny title for a special, Give It to the Lady. <laughs> <laughs> you just hand any burden to the lady? Yeah. You're like, you fucking handle this. It does suck for women because it's like, well, this is just biology. Like, we, we know we're trying to be so level playing field, which is good and progressive and all that, but like... If you look at any animal show, there's like strict gender roles. There's a lot of rape. There's yeah. a lot of violence. There's a lot of territorial bullshit. Yeah. Like, I don't know, ladies, you you have the baby. You know, as much as we, we change gender and all that, like you have eggs in you, you have a baby, and then you have this weird connection to it, maybe even more than a man. Yeah, no, you. I, I know that for a fact now that I have a kid. Yeah. And it's like, that's why a lot of, some of this modern feminism is just bullshit. Right. I'll just outright say it's bullshit. It's because because the baby wants its mom. Yes. And here's the thing. The mom wants its baby. Yes. I mean, my wife is like completely devoted to that baby in right. a way that like I'm not engineered to be. And there's points where I'm just going like, I just want to hand it to her yeah, and go of fix course. what's going on. Right, right. And she does. Yeah. Because it's like, there's a tit that makes food for the baby that's there. Yep. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? I know. It's like women. And, and back in the day, again, another example of like before the industrial revolution or whatever, it's like, do you guys want to work in the coal mines with us? Like, what yeah, do you, you want exactly. to fucking come shovel? Sh- it's like, you have to raise the kid or yes. else the kid just dies. Yes. You can't just live a baby with me and Mark Norman. We're going <laughs> to kick it around like a fucking soccer ball. <laughs> yeah, that's why the biggest misogynist is biology. Like, it sucks for women that this is this is how it is, and I, I feel for them, and it's just it's just a bad hand to be dealt. But that's my point is it doesn't, it, it doesn't suck because they love it. That, it, it, well, like, why do they pretend they don't? Or because why do they they're cunts! No, I'm joking. <laughs> they're lying. I think a lot of it is modern, kind of like, oh my God, like, you know, this is so unfair. You guys are out there earning a living. And then it's like, that's, don't you love, you, what, do you want to work? You don't want to be with right. your baby? And then when they have the baby, they all they want to do is be with the baby. Right. It's like, if they don't, then there's something weird about that. That's true, yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but I no, just felt no. like, I, I wanted just... to make that point where it's like, does it suck to be with your baby if you got tits and it wants to right. eat off your tit? Maybe it's a youth thing where they go, you know, you're 22 going, I don't want to be that soccer mom uh, idiot staying at home, wiping spittle off the shoulder, but maybe they, it's in them a little bit. Yeah, I just want to say, hey, ladies, you know, you may want to think about the future a little bit. I mean, you know, it's you don't age as well as men, so you might want to settle down. Your biological clock only lasts to about 30-something before it gets dangerous to have a kid. Oh. So it's like, those are just facts. Facts, yeah. We Nobody don't, likes don't, those anymore. People don't like facts. No, they don't like them. It's just, people go, oh, how come it's for a kid? Uh, man, it's like, hey, we didn't make the rules. God made it or whatever made it so we could fuck till we're 80, you know? And right. Like, Alec, Alec Baldwin has a new family. I know. And he's a senior citizen. Right. He's got like 10 new kids in his 60s. Yeah. So it's like, is that because Alec Baldwin's a bad guy or is it just because God's a bad guy? God's a bad guy. God's a guy. That's how you know he's a guy. That's how you know he's, he's a guy. bad. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> he made it so guys could reproduce till the 80s and women have like five years when it's appropriate to fuck. Right. Otherwise, you're on MTV's Teen Mom. That's also why women call women whores. Like, all we talk about is anti Because they shaming. are. But, yeah, but then they go, hey, what about this whore? She's fucking this guy who's married. And you're like, I thought it was okay to slut, be slutty. Right. It's very confusing. It's very confusing. You have a great joke about that. 
I do. You have a great, yeah. You have a oh, joke about, yeah. yeah you want me to be respectful, and right, uh, right, and yeah. And I come in, you're like, uh, you're, it's, it was, a, it's a great oh, joke thanks. that really nails it. Dang, that that joke took like six months to get to work, so I yeah. appreciate that. That was a great joke. Uh, you're a great comic. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm one trying. of the one of the best. The thing I love about you too is like you write great jokes, but also the jokes sometimes have like a uh, little substance to them, or they yeah. they can be edgy. And then you go, hey, I'm just get you just right, fire off some right. shots. Norman's sneaky like that, and that's what's so funny about him <laughs> is he'll say something, then he'll just throw up some fucking <laughs> finger pops, and you go, wait, did he just say that? Yeah, he did. He go, no, nah, we're all Jews. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to just stick with the facts. I try not to do any opinion because mm -hmm. if it comes down to it, I can just go, here's a, se a textbook. Right. Sorry, don't get mad at me. Because we get mad at the comic now instead of getting mad at the actual event or the fact. Right, right. We just kill the messenger. Shane Gillis got in trouble for saying a slur, but they didn't hire any Asians. Right. Isn't that worse? Right. That's a, that's a that's racist a action. Yeah. Why would you get mad about that? But it's easier. It's, it's a package. <laughs> on paper, on video, we got it. Headline. Right. This is like years and years of, of not hiring one. That's not really, doesn't really pop. Like right. this one pops. That's actually a good point. I didn't think actually we do that all the time. Shane Gillis is like the best thing that happened for Asian comics on Saturday Night right. Live. Right, because now they're like, we gotta get a boatload in here. Yeah, get the whole rice patty. <laughs> <laughs> he actually awakened them to the. He awakened everyone to the fact that SNL was racist because they didn't have yeah, any exactly, Asians. Exactly, exactly. Right. But they don't attack them as much. But. Yeah. You need the face. You need the problem child. Boom. Poster boy. It's easier. And also the, blame it on someone powerless. Yeah. So like when you're in power, you can always spin it. It's like what the, the old kings used to do. Oh, it wasn't me. And then they'd bring along some some peasant boy and cut his head off and be like, it was him. Or right. in America, they'd get some poor indentured servant right. or God forbid slave and say it was him. When you know, it's, you're just framing someone who is powerless when you're going like, hey, the, the bigger problem is you have no Asians. Right. For, for decades. Exactly. It's like the Duke lacrosse thing. That yeah. girl admitted to lying. Right. But nobody talks about that no. because it's not as fun. Well, this whole team raped a chick and the coach got fired. I remember the coach went back and was like, okay, it was it was not true. Can I have, and they were like, nah, it's optics. And yeah. you're like, <laughs> so nothing happened and I'm still fired. Right. Like, that's what's wrong with our system. It, it's just, it's a lot of, well, that just feels weird. Yeah, no, no good. The Duke, the Duke lacrosse team was one of the first. Yeah, that was like that was like uh, convicted before a trial or anything. That was right. convicted by media. Right, which is now media, media just goes like, ah, oh, he's guilty. Yeah, because you're right. Even comedians now, a big like kind of hack. We all do it if like we're doing crowd work. We see like six white yeah. guys sitting there. We're always like, ah, oh, the Duke, the Duke lacrosse team. All the time. Yeah, all the time. We a frat guy, a couple of rapists over here. Yeah. Like there's some guys like I've never, I'm a virgin. I've never <laughs> raped anybody, but I'm a rapist now. Yeah. But it's just yeah. And you're like yeah, the do. Duke lacrosse guys. Uh, they said rape those guys, but didn't rape those guys. So right. that's, you look like a bunch of guys who would be accused of rape, but then exonerated. <laughs> that's too much. Yeah, it's Comedy too needs much. to be quick. Yeah, it's got to be quick. I and mean, look, like every black comic's like, hey, these white people hate spicy food. I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, I love hot sauce. Yeah. I grew up on hot sauce. I got, I ate, I'm like Hillary Clinton. I got eight hot sauces in my jacket. <laughs> but I get it. It's a joke. I'm not an idiot. But not your Lacoste jacket anymore. Ah, that's it's, gone. It's hung up. It's hanging up in the uh, house. But you still went with the similar look with the jacket. With like I just a like a jacket. Yeah. It's, it's a little warm in here. I'm kind of sweating, but I keep the jacket on. Yeah. I feel so, safe. Well, this was the... Thank you for being my first guest. Oh, geez. I'm is trying it, to figure is it over? Out, yeah. I'm All trying right. to figure out what, what we're doing, but this was just such a fun conversation. We were going to go live like we do, but I forgot, and my phone's charging, so that's fine. But uh, none... Uh, I couldn't have... Think of a better guest to have for my first guest, Long Days. Podcast is going pretty good to start. Oh, nice. Yeah. And good for you. You bring in big numbers, so thank you. Bang, oh, bang, hey, bang. We'll see. Yeah, we'll when see. you come in. So the great Mark Norman, you guys know him. Check him out. He's got, uh, you got two podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the name of the game. You know, yeah. it's uh, Tuesdays with Stories, and we might be drunk. One's about boozing. One's about everything else. So uh, give, give it a whirl. It's offensive. It's irreverent. It's gay. Go nuts. <laughs> and check out Out to Lunch on YouTube. Uh Check out his special. I think it's like at eight million now. What is six, it? Six, six million? and a half ish. So doing great. I mean, I was YouTube was a failure in my eyes. I was crushed, and now I'm so glad it's on YouTube. Yes, I mean that's a, that people can just constantly keep discovering it that way. You exactly. Know, like there's gonna be a few people who go check it out from that. I hope. Go check out his hour special on YouTube. Google all his Conan sets, all his late night sets. Follow his podcast. Go see him live on the road. Check his website. I mean, it's pretty easy now. Just if you're interested yeah. in Mark Norman, put the name Mark Norman 
And uh, and if you, there's probably like only a few people who don't know you because you're all comedy fans that are watching. Oh, great! Yeah. yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. And I just huge fan. The whole thing. It's good to see you just cooking again. You're you're up and at them. I feel like we lost you for four years. I don't know where you went. <laughs> it's, it's called a career dip. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's good to see. I mean, sure, you're in the middle of, what are we, in Connecticut right now? Yeah. I don't know where we are, but uh, it's great to be, great to see, and thank, it's an honor to be on the show. Yeah, well, you know, I was, you never know how things are going to, things have changed, because I would think we'd hopefully be having this conversation on, if this was like before the internet, like we didn't see the internet coming like this, it would have been, I would have been on your show, you would have a talk show, like <laughs> yeah, Letterman and stuff, right. and I'd be sitting there doing a five minute set going, and you'd have me on because you knew me from back in the day. Now we're just sitting in my old apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and this is TV now. This is TV, yeah. yeah, it's very strange. Everything flips, I mean at one point, asses used to be small. Right. And now they're huge and they're great and we love them. TVs were fat, asses were small, and it's flipped. It's flipped. So you yeah. never know what's going to happen, folks. What you're basically saying is white guys are going to come back in. <laughs> <laughs> we're out now, but we're coming back. White guys are tits. I feel like we're always hanging in there, you know? <laughs> On that note, peace out. <laughs>